Welcome ladies and gentlemen, today we're going to talk about the template tank build for the Somerset chapter. There's a lot of cool stuff to talk about, so let's get started. I do have a written guide on my website, link in the description below. The written guide goes more into detail and it shows you a lot of other options in terms of sets or skills that you have. Because there's a lot of good tanking setters, this is just one option. We have really nice max resources, the resistances are also nice. Then we are using the lower Mundus stone to get more health. If you want to change it, if you think 40k is too much, you can use another Mundus stone. Up to you. And in terms of buff food, we use the standard max health, magic and stamina. You can buy in guild stores. And triset potions. Now, they are very expensive, but they are really really good. So if you actually can afford them, I recommend using those. Because they give 7.6k stamina, magicka and 10k health back for, for one click. Because we are an Argonian, it's the best race for tanking. Because of the resourceful passive. When you drink a potion, you restore 4620 4, health, magic and stamina. So just to quickly showcase you this. I dodge roll a little bit. And now I use I use the shield and now I press my potion. Look at my resources. They they you get such huge potion like a stats boost from pressing one button. It's insane. So 7.6k from here and another 4.6k from here. On top of that we get 9% max health and 5% healing done and healing received. Other races that also work are for example Imperials, Orcs, Nords. In the end you can tank on any race. Again, Argonian is the best choice. I do recommend to be a vampire because of the undeath passive. This reduces the damage when you go low health by quite a bit. Keep in mind you have to be stage 3 or higher. When you're stage when you're stage 2, 3 or 4, you will take increased fire damage, so don't forget that. Make sure to not forget to subscribe, more videos in the future, I will keep updating this here and on my website. My website is always more up to date, keep that in mind, I have an update log there. If I change something, I write it down. Now what sets do we use? The number one go-to set, like always, Ebon Armory. Really nice 2 and 3 piece bonus and then the 5 piece increases your max health by 1118 for you and up to 11 other group members within 28 meters. But this is a really nice support set and it should be in every group. Sometimes damage dealers or healers have a little bit low health, this helps increasing it so they die less. The second set that we are running for this setup is Brands of the Imperium again. If you want to run Alkosh here or Torux, go for it. All those other sets are listed on my site. I do like this set. When you take damage, you have a 10% chance to grant you and your allies within 8 meters a damage shield that absorbs 12k damage for 6 seconds. It has a 15 seconds cooldown. So this can be a very nice set, especially if you have people that are not that are pretty new to the game and they stand in a lot of unnecessary damage. So this shield can be very useful. You can actually increase this number if we would put points. We would put points here into Bastion. That's another option, but I don't think it's necessary. 12k is already more than enough. The last set is Turbokun. This drops in Fang Lair. What this does is, when a nearby enemy damages you, summoning a growing pool of desecrated bile for 8 seconds. Enemies in the bile, they receive disease damage and are afflicted with minor maim and minor defile, reducing their damage and healing received by 15%. This is a very nice, let's say, AoE set, so if you have like 10 mobs on you, most of them will get minor maim, debuff, dealing less damage to you and the group members. If you're in general more interested about sets, you can check out so-sets.com, they have all the sets listed there. Now, in terms of jewelry, I do use free Triune, 
They give me max magicka stamina and max health. Which is really, really cool. Two shield play enchants are more than enough. And a uh, spell cost reduction enchant. If you want, on my site I also showcase another setup with free infused traits and potion reduction cooldown. Or potion cooldown reduction. Which would be the best way to sustain, but then you would have to drink a potion every 21 seconds and it will get very expensive. That's why I chose this set. In terms of weapons. Now keep in mind, both all those sets drop in dungeons, so it might take a while till you actually get those things. If you want the easier to get set, you can always run Torux Pact. On the shields, infused with Tristat, weapon infused. On one you want a crusher and on the other one a weakening enchant. Because weakening applies, uh, like it reduces the target's weapon and spell damage by 452. That's like, that's a huge damage reduction on the enemy side. So they will deal a lot less damage to you. And if infused you almost can keep it up 100%. Then crusher reduces the resistances of the enemy so your damage dealers will do more damage. Now the next thing, so those things like the enchantments, they proc from light or heavy attacks and from weapon abilities. Those here for example, pierce armor or heroic slash. It's pretty easy to actually get it to proc. Champion points. 56, 21, 9. You need a lot here for the break free. 43 heavy attacks return 10%. I mean... You get more resources on heavy attacks and 40 tumbling and 81 shadow ward. You want to have a lot of points here to get the block cost reduction, which is important. 75 blessed, 52 elf born, so our he own healing is increased. 47, 73. Those are here not to, not for us to deal damage, but to activate tactician. When you roll dodge, you set the enemy off balance. That's interesting for the damage dealers, because then they will do 10% more damage on the enemy for a short time. 66 Ironclad, 6 Spell Shield. Most damage in Dungeons and Trials is from direct damage, so this is a must have. 48, 49, 49 and 32 here. They're pretty evenly distributed. If you want a more specific red champion point set up for damage mitigation in trials i also do have an article on my site because each trial has different types of attacks so it's very important to actually optimize the cps i also do have a 300 cp set up on my website if you're not a max cp yet this usually takes a while to get there passives you need all class passives one hand and shield heavy then you want the first two medium and the first two light. Because, oh I forgot to talk about that yet. We have a five heavy, one light and one medium. Because of the undaunted passive here, which gives us 6% overall resources. Make sure to have a reinforced chest. And then sturdy belt. Sturdy, sturdy, all the small pieces. And on head and pants infused. Try that, try that, try that. I forgot about it. Anyway. Then again, vampire on death. Fighter skill, you only need banish the wicked. Major skill is not necessarily unless you use spell symmetry instead of deep thought. Such a guarder, you need the last two because this here gives you a shield, which is really nice. Only a 5k shield, but it helps actually pretty much to absorb when there's a lot of incoming damage. Deliberation is the major protection. While you're channeling this ability, you get 30% damage mitigation. But keep in mind, this is on the PTS. Some stuff still might change. Argonian passives, and then you want medicinal use, so your potions last longer. Now abilities. Radiant Ward. This scales off your health, 30% of your max health for 6 seconds. And as you can see, we have 40k health for 30% is a lot. On top of that, enemies take a little bit of damage and each enemy hit 
increases the shield strength by 6%. So eventually the shield will be about 16k size. So it's, it's huge. If you have this shield active on enemies and uh, the Suchi Order is a 21k shield already. That's pretty, pretty cool. Repentance. When there is dead enemies on the ground, use this to drain them so you get health and 3k stamina for each corpse drain. That's a lot. You can basically sustain forever as long as your group members keep killing stuff. It's nice. Here's armor, main taunt. Ritual of rebirth. This is instant cost now. It is very expensive, 6.6k, keep that in mind, but then again, even though it scales off magic and stuff, then we st it still heals for 7k for us. And you heal a single ally outside this ability's radius for an additional 3.5k. Very strong. You could also run Honor the Dead, which heals only one target, for about the same and is cheaper, and you get 60%. Like, you see, healing anyone who is below 75% health restores 60% of the ability's cost over 6 seconds as Magicka. So that can be a nice way to restore Magicka. Deep Thoughts. This is our main resource management tool, you could say. Apart from, obviously, Repentance and Argonian Potion. Addiction, I guess, you could call it. Focus your body and mind into a meditative state. Healing for 1.8k health and restoring 1.9k magic and stamina every one second. Just to showcase, and I, I don't know, like this. And now I just quickly use it. The resources go up pretty fast, as you can see. And you can only let that channel for a second block again. I am channeling this now, and the moment I press block, it goes into block, so you don't lose a split second from the channel to block. So this is very nice, so you can react to your enemies really fast. As long as you only get hit by light attacks and other stuff, it doesn't matter. You can AFK tank with this, basically. The moment somebody does a CC on you or a very strong heavy attack, you can block. Then afterwards, go back into this again if you want. I will show the combo off in a second on how you can even mitigate damage more. We will go to some trash pack and then... Empowering sweep. This is not here for the damage, but also reduces damage dealt to you by 15% for 10 seconds, plus an additional 4% for each enemy hit. That's also so strong. You can get so much damage mitigation. Extended ritual. This is here, it gives a small heal over time, and on top of that, it cleanses five negative effects from you, and your group members can activate Purify Synergy, also cleansing harmful effects, and it heals them. It's a very strong ability. You could replace this with something else. Maybe if you want to use Power of the Light, maybe if you want to use Puncturing Sweep, stuff like that. Heroic Slash applies Mind and Maim on the enemy, reducing their damage. This is the same debuff as Turvokun, but this is AoE, so it applies to several targets. Here you need to slash every enemy to actually apply main. Also grants you minor heroism, increasing your ultimate regeneration by 1 every 1.5 seconds. Silver Leash, this is your chain. Now, with Somerset, this pulls enemies to you. It costs stamina, so you have to be careful when using it. You need stamina to block, remember. In the rage, this is your range taunt, and then we have restoring focus. This gives major resolve and major ward, increasing physical resistance and spell resistance by 5208. So now I have 22 and 18. I pop this, it goes to 27 and 24. It also gives us minor vitality and minor protection, increasing healing received and Reduces damage taken. Oxy Warhorn, our main ultimate. When you activate this, you get 10% stamina, magic and health. And you apply major force to you and your group members. So they do more critical damage. 
And just to sum this up again. While we are channeling this, we get 30% damage mitigation through major protection. Another 8% from here. So we are at 38%. Then obviously if this is active, it can go up to 25% or whatever. You basically want it to be. On top of that, if Turokun is active, which it is always anyway, it has a cooldown, but it's duration. The enemies do 15% less damage. You see, we work with a lot of damage mitigation buffs and debuffs. Now, all those things apply to your shields. To this shield and to the Imperium shield. So it will take the monsters a while to get through. That's the thing. Before you go into the channel, you always want to make sure you have all the buffs up. Then channel this. You can only channel this for 2-3 seconds. But let's check this out now. To quickly demonstrate, first off, the chain works pretty well, so it pulls the enemy to you. You see, Tur Turbo couldn't immediately procs, basically. Friends of the Imperium also goes off pretty fast. And as long as you keep the shield up, you don't even necessarily need to proc. But again, it costs magic gun. And Brands of the Imperium also procs while we are actually channeling, which is nice. Always make sure not to channel too long, because you want to apply your heals and all that stuff. Keep the heal over times up, keep your buffs up and all that kind of stuff. You see, it's really easy to manage my resources. I haven't even used the ultimate yet. And when I use this, I even take less damage. 10 seconds. To the side. When you drop low, you can always use the ritual. Now. Go around. My ult is ready already. You see, this is pretty, pretty simple. Can sustain forever, and I'm not even using using my potion. Could use pots on cooldown if you really want to. It's just so nice having all those shields going off. The brands of the Imperium shield will also apply to your group members. Don't forget that. Now let me showcase when we actually drop low on health, once they get through the shield. When I use a pot and the heals just to get back up. It's really easy and I barely lost resources. When we look at the heals, Ritual of Rebirth, the max heal we got is 17.4k even though we are a tank set. Average heal was like 12.8k. He fought average heal 3k. We had a lot of small heal over times and big heals, which is very, very nice. Like I said, you can forever sustain. You most likely don't even need to be Argonian, but it's actually nice. I guess it's more or less it. If you have any questions, ask me in the comment section below. Please make sure to not forget to subscribe and hit the juicy like button. Thanks for watching and have a nice day. Cheers.